You need to break some eggs to make an omelet. But how much do you throw away to make your good product? It really has an impact on the price. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And this video's topic is process scrap. So what do we throw away to make our nice product? And it's part of the five material and quality losses being overusage, process scrap, defects, off specs, and claims getting back from our customer. In this whole process, scrap is the one that isn't the product. So most of the other quality losses are in fact the product and this is the one that we will never see as our final product. These are the things that you take out, take away, uh, that you cut off and they were never intended to be a product that simply had a defect or for some reason didn't make it until the end. This is waste within your process. But it can definitely be a very costly source of material loss. So let's look at what we mean by scrap. And a good example is when you are cutting something, say steel plates, and from your rolling and milling operations, you got, well, not a very nice straight edge or it's slightly wider than your customer has ordered. We slice it neatly, exactly to specifications, but then we have some cutoff. So this here becomes our scrap. Basically, the way I think about process scrap, the best short sentence to describe it is, it is material, but it is not our product. So here flows our main product. This is going to the customer, and this material is being cut off in the process. Now, what you will often see is that it can be reused. And especially in industries where this can be reworked, molten down, and put into your process again, we are not that critical on all of this scrap coming off. But it can still be the reworking process itself can be very, very expensive as well. It always costs time. So be critical of these things happening in your factories. And another one that you see in many industries, and it is a good thing, but you should still be quite critical, is that these scrap products, they actually became a nice, pretty value added product by themselves. So the scrap from one process, in fact, became its own product, often at lower price, but from time to time, even at a higher price than the original product. Well, as soon as you really know that it's the only way to make this scrap, so to make this new product, and it's the most effective way, then it's sort of okay. Then we also will start to call it a byproduct. But do be very careful for any of your processes in capabilities to be masquerading as some nice added benefit. Now these offcuts, they are often relatively easy to find. Although, as I said, if it's reworked, melted down quickly, be very careful that you also need to have that stream in your analysis. But usually most of this scrap is put into separate bins, sold to some company that reworks it or a waste company. And these streams are often pretty well documented. Another stream that is very important also to realize that it is scrap, but it's often uh, more difficult to analyze and to pinpoint where it is, is when we're cleaning. Because when we are cleaning in a machine, we do it because there are little bits and pieces left, um, especially when we do this in a, a moist or jelly or any food environment. We have the offcuts, we have the, the stuff sticking to the walls. This is rinsed away. And that means that in this rinsing, we will have lots and lots of product. Product that is going into the wastewater or into waste bins. That is also product. And in fact, for this offcut, we usually get some money. For these waste products, more often than not, we have to pay additional costs. So this is way more expensive waste and very difficult to do something useful with. This, many industries, through the years found a way to at least get the money back. This one is an insidious one. So during your cleaning, check what is still in your equipment, on your floors, what is going into waste bins. And especially if we're talking um, chemical food type of uh, fluid processing or more, more jelly processing, 
we often can install uh, sensors and analyses on the wastewater that get a measurement what is going on in this waste stream. Now for your loss analysis, this whole what does it cost me as a material and what do I get back for it is of course an important thing. When you take the material value that you are cutting out of your process and you add to that the value that your scrap still has, that you get back when you sell it, you get the real cost of this material stream. For your mass balance, for your material mass balance, you need to take the material value, or actually the material weight, so the, the kilos, the mass, into account. Just when you are putting out um, improvement initiatives and checking where it pays to put money and uh, time into improving your process, take into account both of them. If you see that a certain waste stream has a nice client who is willing to purchase basically all of your waste for a pretty good price that is very close to the full material price, this will become almost zero. In that case, I would still recommend that you put a more, let's say, market conform price onto this scrap for your internal communication. Because when you oversaturate that scrap market or this very nice scrap client moves away or finds somewhere else to get it cheaper, you are settled up with a very high sudden material loss. So always be improving your process and especially in this case where the scrap value is very high, do make sure that you are not just letting your process get out of control. It might in fact be cheaper to specifically produce this scrap for that client. And that's the reason why you should still be measuring these things in your material balance. And another little practical tip, if you want to go to improvement opportunities for this waste material before your cleaning takes place, especially if you have a process industry cleaning in place, open your tanks, open your valves and see what comes out. Do this a couple of times just as an experiment to check how much product is actually left behind in your equipment before you start the cleaning process. And you might be surprised that there is one tank where the empty meter, so the, the sensors detecting if the tank is empty or not, is broken or not calibrated correctly. When you have this type of process industry, you don't see what happens inside. You assume that all your readings from your sensors are correct. Well, in my personal experience, this from time to time goes wrong and you can really find tons of material and thus tons of money if you check what your process is doing before the cleaning starts. That's what I wanted to say about process scrap. I hope you liked the video and this material. If you did, hit that like button. And also, please drop me a comment. What was the most interesting, unexpected place that you found some scrap or scrap stream within your own industry? I'd love to know. And for now, I wish you the best of luck reducing your process scrap, improving your whole operational system. But as always, enjoy that improvement journey.